Hello and welcome to Fleet Auto News Podcast. I'm Caroline Falls and today I'm speaking with Bill Gillespie, a well-known personality in the automotive world in Australia. He recently donned a new cap, being named President of Sea Electric, Australia's newest designated OEM. Bill is going to tell us about the genesis of Sea Electric and how and why it recently shifted its headquarters to California. Welcome, Bill. It's a thrill to have you on our podcast. I've been following developments at Sea for about five years since seeing a a Booker garbage truck uh, retrofit by Sea at a fleet exhibition. It's been an exciting journey for sure, and I can't wait to hear more about it from you and to share it with our listeners. Again, welcome, Bill. Thanks, Caroline. It's great to be with you today. Uh, Firstly, I thought let's talk about you joining C, which is a recent development. When, why, and how did that come about? Uh, Well, thanks, Caroline. Yeah, uh, I joined in May this year, but I've been working whilst I was at Hino Trucks. I'd worked internally on the project uh, because it, it does involve Hino in Japan and Hino in Australia. And in my role at Hino, I'd worked on the Sea Electric internal project and I'd made a good connection with the founder and CEO, Tony Fairweather. And so over the time, um, I became more and more interested in the project and more and more interested in the whole zero mission world. I've always been a great advocate for greener technology. So it seemed like an obvious uh, segue for me for for the next stage of my career. And um, uh, things things went along very well and... um, uh, I eventually moved across full time to to Sea Electric, um, and I'm you know it's been a fascinating journey so far. Fantastic, um, yeah. In fact, um, that was one of the highlights of the Brisbane Truck Show this year, uh, where we're talking about Seas uh, working together with Hino, uh, the un- yeah. the unveiling of the Sea Electric trucks. Some of them are built on the Hino chassis imported and built here, I think, by C. Can you tell us everything about the the uh, C electric trucks built here using Hino? And later, I guess, we can talk about other offers uh, that were unveiled in Brisbane. Yeah, sure, sure. Well, the, the two trucks in our range, the 816, which is a smaller delivery truck, if you like, used for infrastructure work like tip tip trucks and council trucks but also uh, delivery um and then a larger truck which is a the gh bigger truck both of those are imported from hino in japan as skd or semi knockdown kits in, in containers uh two per container in the large truck and four in the smaller truck uh they come into australia they directly shipped from Tokyo into Melbourne and we assemble them in our factory in Melbourne, um, assemble the truck on a jig and then we install the C electric uh, power system or the drive system into the truck. So that's a fully built up unit from C electric. So assembled um, in Australia, in Melbourne for the Australian market. Fantastic. Um, I think the introduction of an electric truck, uh, the ideal size for these uh, parcel and grocery deliver- deliveries at this juncture, where we have a COVID-driven surge in online shopping, is magic. Um, yes. Yeah. As you said, um, it's a 100% electric, uh, four-and-a-half-tonne truck that can be driven with a car licence. It's a game-changer. Right. Yeah, that is, and that's that's the most recent truck. That that truck is aimed primarily at last mile delivery, so a home delivery uh, service similar to the current truck that the Woolworths, for instance, use, um, and they're one of the end uh, end user companies that that are going to in time uh, trial one of these vehicles. Um, we've already done extensive testing in Australia on that truck. Um, and already it's reaching the payload benchmark and also the, the range benchmarks that we've set. So it's very exciting to be able to offer a, an Australian built, assembled electric truck uh, that, that can be driven on a car licence. And there's a, 
there's a huge demand for that in the Australian marketplace um, from a, for a range of different customers. Yeah, it's amazing. So, um, like this, uh, you know, swelling of the fleet of that uh, that size uh, by Woolworths and Coles and others. I mean, is that just um, being in the right place at the right time for you? Um, well, it's, it's not just happenstance. Um, it's uh, part of a strategy to offer a last mile delivery truck. Um, you, you don't need to be um, Einstein to work out that the last mile delivery business is huge and growing and will continue to grow based on all the forecasts. So, and what we know is uh, companies are seeking a zero emission solution for that type of work. So if you can offer one, then arguably you've got you've got a marketplace that's growing and one into which we think we can slot very successfully. Mm. Um, I'm also noting like recent discussions now about electric vehicles aren't so fixated on range anxiety anymore. What do you see as the concerns? For anyone considering uh, moving into EVs or you know switching today, uh, look, I think range anxiety, as they describe it, is is fairly quickly becoming an old conversation. And, and just recently, Arena, the federal government infrastructure funding body, uh, released a range of grants for uh, four different companies to install charging infrastructure in Australia, I think over 400, the, the subsidy was for 400. And um, so a range of companies are doing that. I know Ampol were listed as one of those. They plan to uh, introduce electric charging onto all their forecourts over the next two years, three year, two to three years sort of phase. Um, so, so that range sort of anxiety that people may experience today just won't be part of the conversation. It's you'll be able to charge your cars pretty much anywhere you like. Um, clearly, uh, it still takes longer to charge a car than it does um, than it does to put fuel in it. Um, in the truck world, what we see is mostly they're charging at their base. They go out, they do their run, and then they come back. So with with some of the companies we work with, that's exactly how they operate. They charge from their own renewables structure, either. Um, solar on the roof or they have another way of generating renewable energy and they charge their trucks overnight on a low cost tariff regime so they're not saying to us when we talk to them about electric trucks that range is an issue it's just it's just not a conversation but it's horses for courses of course if you know if a, if a truck is going to be driven from Sydney to Newcastle and back every day that's a different challenge and one that probably isn't going to be met today by an EV truck. Mm. Um, I Just turning to something else now, I did mention in the intro that C has been deemed an OEM, or Original Equipment Manufacturer. Is, Correct. Is that because you uh, also do complete own design builds or... Uh, can you tell well, us more about the designation, why it's significant? You know, was it hard to achieve? Things like well, that. Well, I think you need to be you need to be assembling or manufacturing your own truck, which is exact, exactly what we do. So we we bring the componentry from around the world. We also have a percentage of the truck that's made from locally produced items, so cabling and, and switchgear and items like that. So in that sense, we're no different to, to Volvo, who have a factory at Wacol. They may do a little bit more local stamping of items, but essentially we're doing the same thing. We bring chassis and bodies and trucks, truck components from around the world, and then we assemble them. So becoming an OEM is legitimate for us, and we've joined the Truck Industry Council, uh, recognised on that now. We will have our own registrations uh, listed with the Truck Industry Council, just like every other truck manufacturer. So I think in terms of normalising that uh, and normalising the experience for potential customers and buyers, it's important that we're recognised as a truck manufacturer. 
Okay. Um, I also wanted to just talk about the shift uh, of C Electric. I think it was headquartered in Victoria until recently, and it's uh, moved to California. Uh, so, I mean, California's long been a leader in the shift to sustainable energy and a proponent of it. I've interviewed public works fleet managers from that state, so I know there's a lot going on there in that space. Um, but tell us, in, in your words, why did C move its headquarters to California and when? Well, look, I think there's a lot of energy in Australia for zero emission uh, solutions, uh, no doubt about that. And we've had some great support from buyers around Australia and also companies and, and state governments. Um, so there's no shortage of interest. I guess the fact is, of course, that the market is a certain size in Australia. Um, we want to recognise that and respect that. But the North American market is just off, you know, in a, in a bigger scale, much bigger scale. So if you're going to grow a business in this space, you need to be looking to uh, to North America and also to Europe. And we've just established an office in um, uh, in Germany as well. So you know, we we want to stretch our spread our wings, if you like. The North American market is very important. We'll eventually be headquartered out of North America, most likely in Chicago on the east eastern side. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, we've got an office in California. In Torrance, the Californian opportunity is big because they've got a lot of incentives for Californian companies to change to zero emission trucks. So it made sense for us to be in that market initially, and eventually we'll be um, we'll have offices uh, right across North America. Well, wow. looking forward to uh, keeping my eye on C Electric. Um, so uh, just talking about this. Uh, boon that's going on for you i hear that an ipo or initial public offering may be being considered um is there anything you can tell us about that like could it be a dual listing on the australian exchange as well as on the us um i guess the chief benefit is that it gives c electric the ability to raise capital to expand is that the case is that what you and the board are envisaging rapid growth and planning for that? Yeah, look, obviously it costs money to scale to this level and uh, building trucks and, and the infrastructure is not um, not without its cost. So growing the business means we need to, at some point, um, decide whether we list on the, a stock exchange and which one is it. It's more like, most likely to be the NASDAQ and that's most likely to be in the first part of 2022, although that timing is yet to be decided, but yeah, we would like to list and go to the market with an, with an IPO in the in the first half of next year if, if that timing works out. Okay, wow. Um, let's finish up now with you telling us uh, what to watch out for next from C and uh, also maybe from the electric vehicle world generally. Okay, well, I think really for us, it's uh, we've just finished this uh, last mile delivery prototype truck, um, refrigerated. I think that's very exciting. And that's in the next two months, that prototyping and trial program will be over. And then we'll be into market with that truck. Very exciting project for us as a company, but also for the marketplace in Australia. And a real Australian first, uh, the truck will um, meet the range of over 200 kilometres on, on a charge, and that's game-changing for the market. So that's the, that's the most interesting thing we've got coming in this next three to four months. The other one we're doing is we're working with Eno on a on-demand bus, which is a Poncho, the small Poncho 21-seat bus that they currently sell in Australia. We are working with them on a prototype and a project to... Um, charge uh, to repower that vehicle with a with an electric uh, drive system, and that will also be a very exciting project in the first half of 2022. Um, I guess more more generally, we're seeing governments across Australia, mostly state governments, to be fair, um, but certainly the Victorian state government and the Queensland state government are very interested in the whole um, 
zero emission space, and that's not just electric, it's also hydrogen and hybrid. So that whole world is really um, heating up and a lot of interest from state governments in how they can um, set the framework. Uh, Queensland's got their so-called superhighway that they've installed charging infrastructure right throughout Queensland, up the eastern seaboard. And Victoria is very keen to involve the state government not only in just the technology but also the potential manufacturer uh, side as well. So, um, and, and other state governments across Australia are doing similar things. So really it's being led by grassroots level people but now state governments are picking it up and they're forming their own strategy in their own direction. So it's a really exciting time to be in the, the electric vehicle industry more, more generally. It certainly is. It's just fantastic. Thank you so much for your time today, Bill Gillespie. Um, it was informative to hear what's going on and uh, just great to be part of uh, this exciting journey for sea and for electric vehicles generally. Thanks, Caroline. It's been great to be with you. Thank you.